Welcome to EnergyModels.com. In this introduction to eQuest, we're going to discuss the basics and the use of eQuest without actually entering the program itself. Before we do that, we're going to make several assumptions. The first assumption we're going to make is that you understand HVAC and that we don't need to explain any concepts. The next assumption that we're going to make is that you understand zoning. If you do not understand zoning, you may want to discuss it on our user forum. Finally, we're going to assume that you have some knowledge of energy modeling. We are making these assumptions so that we can skip the boring parts for those of you who already know and jump straight into understanding the program. Let's take a look at the basics of eQuest. eQuest is the Dotu engine with graphics and wizards built on top of it. It can be used for very quick runs or for very complex simulations. The three wizards that you'll need to be immediately familiar with are the schematic design wizard, the design development wizard, and the energy efficiency measure wizard. The first two wizards, the schematic design wizard and the design development wizard, are used to construct your project, while the last wizard is used to make comparisons. What if you want to try multiple types of glass? The Energy Efficiency Measure Wizard, or EEM Wizard for short, can model up to 10 different options and give you results for each of those. So, where do we begin? Let's start with a simple calculation. Let's say we have a single shell building. We'll get to shells in a bit and we just want some quick results. What we could do is run the schematic design wizard in literally a matter of minutes and show the standard reports. In addition to that, you could run the schematic design wizard, then run the energy efficiency measure wizard, which is run after you complete your schematic design. And from the energy efficiency measure wizard, you could get the standard reports, as well as the parametric run reports, comparing multiple options. To make things a little bit more confusing, we could have done the exact same thing in the design development wizard. However, it would have taken an additional few minutes, but we could have accomplished the same thing in relatively the same amount of time. So, this leads us to a common question among new users. Which wizard do I use? For completely new users to eQuest, you can almost always start with a schematic design wizard. It's used for single shells, while the design development wizard is used for multiple shells. So the question is, what is a shell? Well, if you look at the pictures here and see on the left hand side, there's a three-story building with three identical floors, all sharing the same building footprint. So that would be a single shell. The image on the right shows a single building with an additional wing that would be considered an additional shell, since all parts of the building do not have a common footprint. However, if you started in the schematic design, and later on you determined that you had an additional shell, you can always jump from the schematic design to the design development wizard. eQuest is made such that you can hop around from different programs and still keep your same data. However, these are mostly one-way streets, as we'll see here. A typical user could run the schematic design wizard, run that file, in the design development wizard, and from there, the user could run in the detailed interface. Please note that these arrows here are one directional. In other words, as soon as you go from the schematic design wizard into the design development wizard, you can't go back to the schematic design wizard. It's the same way when you go into the detailed data entry, you can go back into the last wizard that you had used.
However, any data saved under the detailed entry will not be reflected when you go back into the wizard. So effectively, you cannot go back from the detailed interface to either of these wizards. A common mistake is that users start in the design development and try to go to the SD wizard. This is impossible since the design development wizard starts with more data and you would lose data when you go into the SD wizard. With so many options, let's take a look at some of the common flow diagrams that a user may encounter. A user may simply start in the schematic design wizard and jump into the summary results or the detailed sim output or advanced results. The user may also, running the same file in the SD wizard, run the EEM report and get parametric run reports in the meantime. This same thing can be done with the design development wizard. However, remember that design development can have more than one shell and it has multiple options. We'll cover both of these wizards separately in later lessons. Another common flow diagram is to start with the SD wizard, run your parametric runs, jump into the DD wizard, run your parametric runs again, and from the DD wizard, you could run your summer results or get your detailed results as well. Finally, and if you're going to use eQuest, you are no doubt going to have to use the detailed data entry. So, you could start in the SD wizard, run into the DD wizard, move to the detailed data entry, and finally get your results. This is common for energy modelers. But before you get that far, you're going to have to understand how the files are related and how they operate. There are several important file types in eQuest. There's a .pd2 file. These are the building inputs from the wizards. The data in this file is the data entered by the user and not the defaults. The next file type is the parametric run definition. This contains the option when you run parametric runs. For instance, when comparing glass types. There's also a .sim file, which is a large output text file. This can be viewed in eQuest when we want to view advanced reports. And perhaps most importantly, there's a .imp file. These files are created by the wizards, if you use them, and edited in the detailed entry. Advanced users can actually edit the .imp file directly with a text editor. And if you continue with these lessons, we will be doing brief examples of that shortly. While we haven't gotten into eQuest yet, before we open the program, it's important to note that the text is color-coded. So when you see text in multiple colors, you'll know what it means. Red text is indicative of anything that you have changed or, if you're opening someone else's file, that they have changed. Green text is indicative of the eQuest default values. Less common are the last four colors, dark blue and light blue, library values, or user-defined default values, magenta for values based on formula-like expressions, Expressions will be covered in a later lesson as well. And purple shows linked values, which will also be covered in another lesson. While all this data may be overwhelming at first, remember, we're going to start simple and gradually get more complex. In the next lessons, we're going to take a look into the program.